Welcome back to Shark Week. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the smallest sharks around. The title of the world's smallest shark is held by the dwarf lantern shark. However, due to how close it is between the smallest species, there is a lot of overlap, leading to a less clear winner. The problem with small sharks is that many of them are quite rare species, and so there is not a lot of information about some of them. Sharks such as the Panama ghost shark and pale cat shark are all very small in length, but they are very rare and hard to find, and so have not been studied that much. The Panama ghost shark doesn't even have an IUCN ranking as it is so data deficient. The size of these sharks is also sometimes unreliable due to how few of them have been seen or caught. So based on the most reliable and most studied sharks, if you take it by maximum size, the dwarf lantern shark is the smallest at 20 centimeters, with the others less well defined due to how small the differences are and how rare the species are. The average sizes are very close due to individual variations. And if you go by the size at which they mature into adults, then the spine pygmy shark could be called the smallest smallest at 15 centimeters for males and 17 for females, compared to the dwarf lantern shark at 16 centimeters for males and 15 for females. So even there, different genders have different sizes, so it's all very hard to truly determine who is the smallest, and who's the second, and who's the third, and so on. What can be said for certain is that they are all small, so given the information at hand, these are some of the smallest sharks around. Dwarf lantern sharks are small, they can fit in the palm of your hand and therefore pose very little danger to humans. They are found in only a small range off the coast of Venezuela and Colombia at roughly 280 to 440 meters down. The name lantern shark comes from its most prominent feature, other than its small size, its bioluminescence. They possess light emitting photophores on their underside and fins, which serve two different purposes depending on the time of day and depth of water they are in. At shallower depths with more light, the light from the photophores allow the shark to be camouflaged and hard to see as it closely matches the light coming from above. When in deeper, darker waters, it does quite the opposite. The light illuminates parts of the shark and attracts smaller fish for the shark to prey upon. Being so small means that a lot can prey on you, but it also protects you from humans. They are not caught by humans as they are so small and are only occasionally caught as bycatch due to its small size and rarity. Being small does however cause the reproductive abilities of the shark to be limited. They are ovoviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviviv
They are also ovoviviparous, giving birth to around three young, but where these sharks seem to really differ from the dwarf lantern shark is that they are thought to be gregarious. They tend to prey upon squid and octopus which can be considerably larger than themselves, and so it is thought that they may hunt in packs. It is unknown if dwarf lantern sharks do this as well, but for now at least it's very likely that green lantern sharks do. This is backed up by the fact that on the few occasions that these sharks have been caught, they seem to be caught with many other individuals. This pack theory also gives a new use to their bioluminescence. Many animals, particularly insects, use bioluminescence for communication between individuals, and so it is thought that the green lantern sharks may do the same, being able to recognise individuals and coordinate hunts. There are many other small sharks around the world, but they're all very rare and we know very little about them. The fact that we know so little about some of these sharks shows us how unknown the world's oceans really are. There could very well be a smaller shark than the dwarf lantern shark, but we just haven't found it yet. There are a lot of unknowns in our ocean, but one thing that definitely is known, and not up for debate, is that Megalodon is dead, okay? It's not still alive out in our oceans, hiding away, ready to swallow boats whole. Which brings me on to tomorrow's video. Our final Shark Week video is what did Megalodon really look like? Of course, we couldn't do Shark Week and not have a Megalodon video, so be sure to watch it tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserved it and if you'd like to see more from us.